Hello everyone, welcome back to Tech World with Sahana. Today I'm back with Kubernetes failures and fixes set to. In this video, the failures that I am going to discuss about will mostly be related to our chapter 3 and chapter 4 of Kubernetes Zero to Interview Hero series, that is pods and replica sets. So if you are not aware of any of the concepts that we are going to discuss in this video, make sure to check these two videos out. Link is in the description and I have also pinned them in the comments. But still, if after that also you have any questions related to these, please comment down below. I'll make sure to respond to you back. So let's get started. You deployed a pod with an init container that runs a database migration script. And after the deployment, the main container never starts. Let's troubleshoot and fix it. Step number one, we will check the pod status with kubectl get pods. The pod is stuck in init crash loop backup, which means the init container is failing repeatedly. Until it succeeds, Kubernetes will not start the main container. Step number two, describe the pod. We will describe it with kubectl describe pod pod name and the event log confirms that migrate db failed with exit code 1. Kubernetes is repeatedly restarting it blocking the main container from starting. Step number 3. We will check the init container logs with kubectl logs pod name dash c container name. The migration script cannot connect to the database. This is why the init container fails. Until the migration succeeds, the pod remains in the init state. Step number 4. We will verify the database service with kubectl get svc. The database service exists and DNS resolution works. So the problem is likely that the database isn't ready when the init container runs or the credentials are incorrect. Step number five, we will fix and redeploy. So we will review and fix the DB scripts or DB credentials here according to your project requirement. And then to redeploy, we will first delete the pod with kubectl delete pod pod name and apply new changes with kubectl apply dash f deployment camel. Now, when we check the status, we could see that it's up and running. In your DevOps interview, you are asked, you create a multi-container pod using a sidecar pattern for logging. But your sidecar container is unable to read the logs written by the main container. How would you troubleshoot it? First, we will check the pod status with kubectl get pods. The pod has two containers, but it's in crash loop back of state. Then we will just describe the pod with kubectl describe pod pod name and we could see both containers use the same volume empty directory but they are mounted at different paths. The main container keeps crashing likely because it can't access the logs directory or expects files that are not there yet. Then we will check the logs for the failing container with kubectl logs pod name dash c container name. Then we can see that the sidecar container is trying to read log file created by the main container, but the file does not exist. So we will update the mount path same for both container inside the pod. And then we will just redeploy and verify. We can just delete and reapply the manifest so it could pick up the new changes and we could see that now the pods are running with the new changes. In your DevOps interview, you are asked what if there are latency when your training pods try to access pre-processing pods. How will you troubleshoot it? First, you will check the pod placement with this command. So here the ML training is the namespace name where the pods are running. And we can see that the pre-processing pod is running on node A while the training pods are running on node B. Then we will inspect the pod affinity configuration with this command. So we could see that we are using a soft rule like preferred here and not the required. That means first it will try to schedule on the same node, but if suppose it's unable to do so, then it will take any other node that is available. Next, we will verify the node resource availability with this command and we can see that node A was fully utilized and there was no room for additional pods, which is why both the pods are running with different nodes. But still, we want our pod to use the same node to avoid the latency. So we will update the rule from preferred to required and just reapply the YAML. As a DevOps engineer, you are asked in your interview, you notice that a pod in your cluster is not receiving an IP address and cannot communicate with other pods. How would you troubleshoot it? First, we will check the pod status. 
Notice how Web0 pod has none for IP. That means pod has not been assigned to network address. So we describe the pod for event details. Here we can see that the network setup has failed and pod cannot give an IP due to network issues. So we check these CNI plugin pods. We can see that one Calico pod is failing. That's likely the reason the pod cannot get the IP. So we fix the CNI issue by restarting the failing CNI pod. Now you can see the CNI pod is back online and network should now allow pods to get the IPs. So finally we restart and verify the Web0 pod. So the pod now has an IP assigned and network issue has resolved. So the communication would work. In your DevOps interview, you are asked you created a new replica set, but it isn't launching any pods, even though the YAML seems correct. What could be the reason and how would you troubleshoot it? First, we will check the replica set status. We can see that the desired replicas are three, but the current is zero. That means the replica set has not created any pods. Next, we will describe the replica set for events. And the event shows that the replica set failed to create pods because of a service account. Next, we will verify the pod template section in the YAML. We can see that the replica set expected a service account named frontend sa But if it doesn't exist, pod creation will fail. So we will check if this service account exists or not. And we can confirm with this command that there is no frontend sa service account. Next, we will create the missing service account with kubectl create command here. Here, the frontend sa is the service account name and the web app is the namespace. And the pods are now created successfully. Issue is resolved. You attempted a rollback after a failed deployment, but the pods didn't revert to the previous version. What could be preventing the rollback from taking this effect? So when we try to attempt the rollback, we can see the rollback failed because no previous versions were available to revert to. So we check the revision history limit. We can see the revision history limit is set to zero. So the old replica sets were deleted, which is stopping the rollback. So we manually revert the deployment image to the previous working version and verify the rollout status. We can see the pods are now running with the previous version. So we confirm the pods. All the pods are now running the corrected version and the issue is resolved. But there's one final step that we will perform is to update the revision history limit for future rollback. And once you do it, any future rollback would work. In your DevOps interview, you are asked, you paused a rollout for some reason, but even after resuming, the deployment remains stuck in the paused state. How would you fix this and continue the rollout? So first, we will check the deployment status. We see that the rollout is incomplete and deployment appears to be stuck. So we verify the deployment details. We notice that the deployment is not paused, but rollout failed with progress deadline exceeded. So we inspect the replica set for mismatch. We notice that the old replica set is not fully scaled down, and that's why the rollout is stuck in the midway. So we manually trigger a new rollout with this particular command, and this restart triggers a fresh rollout, forcing the deployment to recreate pods and proceed normally. So at the end, we just verify the rollout for completion. We notice that the deployments are now completed successfully. You performed a manual blue-green deployment, but after deployment, traffic is still being routed to the old pods. What might have gone wrong? First, we will check the service details and we notice that the service exists, but we need to confirm which pod it's targeting. So we inspect the service selector and we observe that the service selector still points to environment blue pods and that's why traffic still routes to the old version, which is our blue deployment pod. So we verify the pod labels and we confirm that the new green pods exist, but service is still selecting the blue pods. So we update the service to point to the green environment to route traffic to the new green pods. And then we just verify the endpoint after the update and we confirm that endpoints now show green pods and the traffic is correctly routed to the new green deployment. You did a canary deployment for limited testing, but the canary pods are receiving all the traffic instead of a small percentage. How would you correct this behavior? First, we will check the current replica set counts. We observe that canary has five replicas, which should be one, and stable has zero replicas, which should be four. So the issue is with the YAML file. 
So we update the canary deployment YAML and we correct the replica count value from 5 to 1. And we update the stable deployment YAML and we correct the value of replica count from 0 to 4. Then we apply the corrected deployment YAMLs for both stable and canary deployments. At the end, we just confirm the traffic distribution. With four stable and one canary pod, traffic is now correctly split. 80% stable and 20% canary. You updated the image tag in your deployment YAML. But Kubernetes didn't create new pods or trigger a rollout. What could cause the image update to be ignored? First, we will check the deployment status. We observe that deployment is stable but no new rollout triggered despite the image update. So, we verify the image configuration and we confirm that the image is updated to version 2 but rollout is not initiated. So, we recheck the deployment YAML for pull policy and we notice that image pull policy is set to if not present. So, Kubernetes may reuse the cached image instead of pulling the updated one. Then we update the deployment to always pull latest image. You can see that the pull policy is now updated to always and this ensures that Kubernetes fetches the latest image each rollout. So, we verify the rollout. Finally, the new pods are created with image update and rollout is triggered successfully. So, that is it for this video. See you in the next one.